Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and I've really dug Pacific Rim. But I actually bought the toys before I saw it, hoping my blind faith would see me through. It kinda did? This is Gypsy Danger, the titular protagonist Jaeger and first of the three Series 1 figures released by Nika this summer. According to development postings, NECA used digital model files directly from the film production to source their sculpts for this series. There's definitely a sense of miniaturization going on, as some smaller details and panel lines came off looking a bit mushy. However, the gunmetal mechanical detailing really won out in this equation, bringing a sense of legitimacy to the sculpt wherever the softer armor plating falters. Unfortunately, the good paint job that would have elevated this figure's baseline appearance is very lacking outside of the aforementioned gunmetal. Those bits look badass. The stripings and tampo markings? Decent for the figure's price point. The chest turbine and visor? Kind of a bummer. The blue coloration of most of Gypsy Danger's body? An attempt at a weathered look that only really reminds me of the worst of the late 90s and early 2000s era of not-for-kids collectibles. The hue just seems off, with not enough richness to the blue and too much desaturation, and the weathering concept kinda carries it, but not enough to avoid feeling rather sloppy in execution. Finally, the accessory count is total bupkis. Before I saw the movie, I was all like, eh, whatever, I got a robot. Now that I've seen the movie, this is hugely disappointing, especially given the number of swap-ready ball joint connections on this figure. At least like a plasma cannon hand or a, a, a cockpitless neck stump or something would have been cool. Gypsy, gypsy danger, how poseable are you? Is this a song? It kind of eh, poseability on this thing. This is uh, the Gypsy Danger posability section, which opened up with a song, and let's forget that happened. Gypsy danger has got ball joints. Let's say that right up front. Uh, there's a ball joint on the neck. Now, this is uh, one of them ball joints what are slightly limited, uh, at least at first out of the box, because sometimes the paint on this gets uh, gets Nika stuck. But, once you get it all freed up, there's a decent amount of range here. It's a little bit tricky to uh, to grip the head to get everything to turn the way you want to, because you know, Gypsy Danger's got a, a bit of a slick head. But, uh, I, I really like that there's more than just a side-to-side -side motion. Uh, I thought at first this only swiveled left and right and was kind of bummed out, and then when I got stuff like like this going on, it just felt good, man. Another thing that feels super good is this, this uh, abdominal joint in the middle of the chest, because this has huge amounts of range. I believe this is a, a barbell-style double ball joint. Uh, there are a couple of those on this figure, uh, and this, this range is just incredible. This is... This is how you do a torso joint. And uh, this joint got me super hyped because I was like, man, this feels like this is going to be a good time. Then I got to the shoulders. Uh, these use a, ball, a barbell style double ball joint as well. They can go forward and they can go backward. They can go out a little bit. They can go this way a little bit. Uh, something that I kind of like is that the articulation is actually covered by uh, a, a connector. A connector? I, not really, I guess. But it's a, it's a piece of this piece of sculpted detail that goes into the socket. Uh, to hide the joint, and that's really cool. I like that this joint gives uh, motion in... Si well, six directions, I guess. Three major axes would be more like it. Um, the problem is, the range is pretty small in every direction that is not just forwards and backwards. So, I like that you can kind of go like, huh, 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 but then the, the shoulder bits smack into the chest armor and the, the arms can't really go outward all that much. So uh, that's the beginning of the problem I have with Gypsy Danger. And uh, a much better example of that would be the elbow. The elbow bends that much. Check out the huge range, ladies and gentlemen. Why is this happening? I suspect that this, this, and several other problems I have with the articulation are because this is basically Gypsy Danger's CG model rendered in physical form but with way less moving parts, so the armor bits are kind of just banging into each other. Uh, this feels just kind of like this was done in the pre-production of the film, and someone had to figure out how to get all these joints in here, and, like, you see stuff like all this copious detail here in the elbow, which one might think would be a, a really cool, like, double-jointed elbow system, but it's not. It's, in fact, just a huge amount of hindrance. What a bummer. On the bright side, ball-jointed wrists have a great amount of range. I like the wrists. The wrists, the neck, and the abdomen. They are great. Everything else, not so much. The hips uh, are a universal joint that goes forwards and backwards and outwards. How far outwards? That much. Why? <laughs> this thing. These huge flaps on the sides of Gypsy Danger's hips hit directly into the side of Gypsy Danger's belt piece. 
meaning you get a range of about, like, five degrees outwards motion. And even worse, there is a huge, like, horizontal seam right here across the, the gunmetal in the blue. But it ain't no swivel, man. There is no thigh swivel whatsoever. And that kind of sucks. The knees can bend 90 degrees, thankfully. Unlike the elbows, these things did not begin smacking into themselves. And then uh, the ankles are uh, ball jointed. They don't have like a huge range of tilt, but they've got enough to give Gypsy Danger the illusion of a, a pretty good stance, no matter how you place her. Because you can have them together like this. You can you can slide them apart a bit. Things still stay pretty flat. Um, bummer is that no matter what I do, eventually I hear a bang in the distance as Gypsy Danger slowly, slowly, slowly tilts herself forward, and then. I guess pulls a Michael Jackson. Whenever I do this myself, things are fine, but when I stand Gypsy Danger like this, I inevitably find her like that. And uh, on the bright side, there are holes in the bottom of the feet for hopefully some kind of figure stand. I don't know which one. Uh, and then most bewilderingly, the toe doesn't move, but Gypsy Danger's heel can do that for no reason I can discern. But hey, it can do that. Anyway... Gypsy Danger is really good at standing stock still in a number of very natural ways. With uh, a bit of tilt, so, you know, there's, there's just standing there at ready. There's uh, casually standing there at uh, kind of casual ready, like, yo, what's up? There's standing a bit ready for action because the monster's off in the distance and Gypsy Danger's gonna, you know, kick some kaiju butt and get some blue all over the floor. But that's about it. Gypsy Danger can't really pull any legit fighting poses. You can kind of BS stuff using perspective and mostly using this abdomen joint to give the illusion of movement. But the number of joints on Gypsy Danger is great. The range on most of those joints is friggin' abysmal. So, uh, I'm not super impressed by how they were cut. Uh, the elbows being, and, and hips, just being such glaring examples of of, I don't get it, and I, this could have just been like a single piece, and we would have lost this much movement, and perhaps that budget could have gone somewhere else, but then I would have been saying there's no elbows, so maybe there's just no pleasing me. Maybe I am just crazy, and I'm the only one who's having this problem. I don't know. My first reaction to NECA's Gypsy Danger was one of abject disappointment, followed by immediate worry for the other two figures I had yet to unpack. As time went on, the figure grew on me as a display piece, and after seeing Pacific Rim in theaters, I am glad to have a physical representation of the main mech, as surprised as I was about its in-hand quality. But don't let my softening mislead you, this is a flawed figure that feels terribly rushed. The lack of accessories, the lackluster paint job, and the frustratingly limited articulation are three factors for which the absence of just one would be a huge improvement. If Gypsy Danger had looked better, or just posed better, or had like a sword and a plasma cannon or two, I'd feel much kinder to the figure. As it is, this is not a toy I'd recommend on its physical merits alone. Everything around Gypsy Danger makes the figure a bit more palatable, but to see the film's headline design end up a middling and unexciting toy is a bit heartbreaking. If you love the film, you'll probably be happy to own it in some small way, but our quiet sadness will bond us as deep as a solid drift. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and this wasn't the only Jaeger to get the toy treatment before Pacific Rim hit theaters. A counterpart piece awaits us in the Shatter Dome, and it surprised me in a much different way.